Hello, everyone, and welcome along to the latest episode of the Turfcast podcast pre-game show, where it does exactly what it says on the tin. We look at the game coming up, and of course, this weekend for Burnley, it is West Ham United down at the London Stadium. Uh, decent record against West Ham United in recent years, uh, but of course, uh, on the pre-game show, what we do is we get a fan of the opposition, uh, a podcaster, a YouTuber, somebody like that, um, to talk about the opposition, because of course, when me and Simon are on the podcast, we don't know much about West Ham, let's be fair, compared to a West Ham fan, for example. And joining me um, this week on the pre-game show is West Ham fan Justin from American Hammers, uh, and as you can tell with the name, Justin is American, joining us all the way from the windy city of Chicago. Thanks for coming on, Justin. Yeah, thanks, man. How you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, thank you, mate. I'm all right, thank you. Uh, what's the weather like out there in Chicago, then? It must be cold uh, over there. Chicago always seems to be snowy. Every time I see it on the TV and stuff around around this sort of time, it's always that like, snowy and, uh, and freezing, so it must be pretty cold out there for you at a minute. Yeah, I, I will say this week is a bit warmer than usual for Chicago winters, which are usually very cold. Um, and very snowy, like you said. I don't know Celsius, so uh, we're, like, oh. we're like in the low 40s, high 30s Fahrenheit. I, again, I don't yeah. really know what Celsius is there, but um, yeah, just very gloomy. Little, little. N- there's not a whole lot of sun during the winter in Chicago, which sort of sucks, but uh, not too cold right now, but I'm sure it'll get cold in the next few weeks. Yeah, well, obviously we we do Celsius, so now I'm all confused. I, I know that I know that Celsius freezing is obviously zero. Everyone knows it's zero to hundred. That's why Celsius is, is used so commonly around the world because it's so easy to understand. But I think freezing in Fahrenheit is around 32. thirty. Oh, is it thirty-two? Right, yeah. So we are today here in Burnley. It's zero, so it must be a little bit warmer out there for you. Probably like three or four celsius something like that i was just going to check on my phone i was going to do a converter (laughs) but you know more than me so you've corrected me thank you very much um but obviously like i say you're from america you live in chicago from chicago that sort of vibe um firstly before we get started i just want to find out why west ham because of course you have a very successful soccer team uh, in chicago as i was just i was just on uh, one of justin shows uh, and as i'm sure if you're regular on the podcast you'll know that um, i do follow mls and my mls team is the chicago fire so when justin told me we're from chicago it was very interesting so so why west ham and not chicago fire basically or, or to be honest just why west ham because obviously i presume you chose a premier league club or whatever and it could have been anybody but there must be a reason why you chose west ham yeah i, I do i do support the fire so um it's it's it. not mutually exclusive, uh, but yeah, why West Ham? Well, I've always loved the game of soccer. Um, you know, grew up watching uh, those great Milan teams in the early two thousands, mid two thousands with Sochenko, Kaká, Sador. Yeah. Um, when I got to college, I became friends with a lot of the soccer team, uh, the guys on the soccer team, and we all really watched Premier League a lot because, to be honest, that was the league that was on TV the most. Yeah. Um, and as the years went by, I wanted to pick a team, but I just didn't want to pick like a Liverpool or United or Chelsea just because they were bigger. So I did some research, wanted to find a team that maybe had some connection or similarity to some teams that I love here in Chicago. And my favorite team here in Chicago is Chicago Cubs. At the time, the Cubs had not won a championship for like 105 years. They've since won one, uh, but at the time they hadn't. So that was one similarity. Cubs don't win a lot. West Ham don't win a lot. And then... <laughs> And then the, also West Ham used to have these apartment buildings that you could see into the old Berlin. Yeah. Similar to Wrigley Field here in Chicago, the Cubs Stadium, you also had that too. And then did research the club, realized, you know, it was a working class club, you know, supporters that really knew their soccer, really knew their, their football, their team, um, supported the club and just started watching them. Met a group of guys here in Chicago that – uh, some expats as well that were here and that camaraderie, that community intensified the passion for the club. And fast forward five years later, or now it's been six years. I just, I, I love West Ham. I don't know. Just, just love the club. Yeah, I can respect that because obviously um, Burnley don't tend to win a lot. Um, so we probably have that uh, in common, sort of like being frustrated by the club and things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, but yeah, I can respect that. I, I don't. I, no, one thing that does does annoy me is when somebody just chooses a team because they're successful. Like uh, the obvious ones are most people in England at my age support Manchester United because growing up in the nineties, uh, Man United won absolutely everything in the nineteen nineties. Um, yeah. So when you see sort of like um, like we've just played Man United at home, um, and normally when you are allowed on the ground. 
uh, you'll see loads of like Man United fans who are from Burnley in the home end sat with their mates from Burnley. It's just if you're from Burnley, support Burnley. What's all this about? And that tends to be. But I think like, as I've told you, just because we've just recorded your show, as I told you, like I say. Uh, being Burnley born and bred for me, um, it, 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 you're always going to be Burnley. So people that don't support sort of like Burnley when they're from sort of like Burnley and 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 go on and stuff like that. But I can respect the fact that you've just not gone. Oh well, they're good. I'll choose them. You, you've gone. Well, you know what? Chicago is my main team, like you say with the Cubs. They're not very good. So I'll choose somebody that I can relate to that also isn't very good. So so yeah, I can respect yeah. that. But like you say, you say like you don't win a lot. Uh, this season you have you've won you've you've done you've started well this season to be fair like normally you get to this yeah. stage of the season and West Ham I don't want to use the term like laughing stock because that's that's incredibly harsh but sort of like West Ham are always the club that are sort of like hovering sort of like above relegation and everyone looks at West Ham and they're like well they're far bigger than that and if you look at the squad on paper they're better than that so why are they there and everyone's always talking about West Ham and saying oh West Ham could go down uh, for me for the last few years I don't really think you've been in any danger but you, yeah you've always sort of like flirted with it um, but you obviously you're 10th now you started well this season you just picked up um, a decent result against Everton at Goodison Park I think you said that was on New Year's Day didn't you again on your show um, so what's different then this season about West Ham like why have you started well compared to previous seasons well I, I will say that you know, in the last few years, we have flirted with relegation, but last year was really the first time that I, since I've supported the team, that I legit had fears of going down. I'd say last year, um, especially with the restart, mm. definitely, I would say we were very, very close to going down. I think we ended up being safe by, by four points or so. But this year, what's, what's different? Uh, well, uh, I think Moyes has been given some time to, to put his – albeit small footprint on the club or, you know, small yeah. handprint on the club. He, you know, he's made some really good signings, uh, Jared Bowen, Thomas Suchek, yeah. um, and uh, one other person I'm missing. Ben Rama has been all right so far. Uh, Craig Dawson has been really good on loan. Um, he, he's made some good signings, some players that have really um, helped out the club. Suchek, for example, has been this box to box midfielder that we've been missing for years. Second, I would say just the organization and discipline in the back line. Um, I think we've only given up 21 goals in 17 matches. Um, West Ham of, of the last four, five, six years, shipping goals for fun. Yeah. Um, we're fit. We're in shape. Um, and it seems like there's a real togetherness. Um, seems like we all work hard for the manager. Um, and... It seems like we've also played this style where we soak up pressure and try to hit people on the counter attack. And I think we've been pretty successful at that. Um, there, there are other reasons too, but I'd say those are probably the, the few main reasons why things that have, have really um, clicked for us so far this year. What are your thoughts on David Moyes then? Because um, I think the general feeling among your fan base was one of underwhelmment when he was appointed. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I kind of respect David Moyes. I think he had a tough time with it at Sunderland. Um, but Sunderland, Sunderland, they've been toxic for years and, and they are where they are now because of that. Um, I, th I think he was... I, th I think the that Man United job was too big for him. I, I, do, I don't think he did well there. Um, but I, I think that was just too big for him. But he probably learned a lot there. You learn a lot for when you don't succeed. And, and, and a lot of successful people will tell you that. There's been times in their life where they haven't succeeded at something. And rather than just crying about it, they've learned about it. Um, but he did well at Everton. He did well at Preston as well. Um, in fact, I would like I say, I was just talking to you about um, when Burnley got promoted in 1999-2000. Um, I think... David Moyes was a Preston manager uh, and they finished above us that year, top of uh, Division 2. We finished second. Um, so he's done well pretty much everywhere he's been, um, apart from sort of like West Ham, uh, sorry, not West Ham, Man United and Sunderland. But I don't really, like I say, blame him for the Sunderland one because nobody's done well there. So, But what, what, what's your feelings on David Moyes then uh, as a manager? Because from the outside looking in, I, I respect him as a manager. He's well organised, well drilled, or he gets that out of his place, should I say. And now, like you say, he's finally getting his footprint on the team and you've started doing well. Yeah, I agree with you on, on the Sunderland and United. I think United, well, I don't blame them for taking the job. It, it was the biggest job in the world at the time. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, it was always going to be difficult, especially to fill the, shoe, the, shoes, the shoes of Sir Alex. Um, Sunderland, yeah, we, we've all seen. I mean, they went down straight away to, um, to League One. So, obviously, it wasn't all David Moyes' fault. Um, mm. At West Ham, so... I mean, he was appointed, reappointed, really, uh, for, for a second time uh, back in, 
December of 2019. Um, so at the time, I think the vast majority of fans, including myself, were very underwhelmed. You know, it's sort of like yeah. going back to your ex-girlfriend after breaking up. With it's like, why are we going? Why are we going back? Like we're literally going backwards, right? We just we, we essentially fired David Moyes for Pellegrini, and now we fired Pellegrini for the guy that we fired. You know, so it was a mess. Um, but I, I I said to myself, you know, he kept us up the first time. Let's get behind him, and he's I think he's done very well. I think the yeah. results show for I mean I think the results speak for themselves. West Ham the West Ham fan base you did have some murmurs as recently as December of some people saying that we should sack him. I, I don't yeah. know what those people I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't tend to get into a lot of debates on Twitter but I, I really was very shocked to 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 hear people say well we're just going to be a mid-table club. I mean yet you, you had a lot of people including myself thinking that we, we were going to go down this season yeah. and now we're in a comfortable position we i mean we can challenge for europa league football so i think like you said he's really uh, made us a well-disciplined side organized um there's a togetherness about the squad going back to my answer to the previous question um he hasn't always gotten it right i've criticized him on his lineup decisions um his substitutions earlier in the season he was waiting to make substitutions until the 85th 86th minute even when we were down um, but I will say that he has improved. He's also ha- admitted his mistakes, which I definitely respected our person. And I mean, again, the results speak for themselves. We, we have, this is our best, we're, we are, have our best point total at this point of the season since the 2014, 15 season. So, I mean, I think we're in a position where we can really kick on here in the months of January and February, and we can maybe challenge for Europa League football. I think he's done an excellent job. Excellent. Yeah, well, you're definitely in a brilliant position, like you say, thinking about Europa League football. Um, that's not something that at uh, this stage last season you, you would have been saying. Um, but sort of like, talk to me then about the sort of like what we can expect from West Ham on Saturday then, like what sort of way are you going to play? I know you mentioned then sort of like um, well-organised, that sort of thing, and that's sort of like an adjective that people will use about Burnley. So what sort of thing can we expect from you on Saturday? Well, like what sort of tactics, what sort of play? Yeah, if we spoke a couple months ago, we, we would be playing three at the back with, with two wing backs. Arthur Masawaku will play our left wing back. Um, he, he's been out for the last month, month and a half. And since then, Moyes has reverted back to a back four, which I think he's more comfortable with managing. I was very worried moving back to a back four. I thought having three at the back and sort of two extra defenders in those wing backs really helped us concede less goals. But credit to Moyes and credit to the defense, we reverted back to a, a back four, and we still have been very solid defensively. You'll see Cresswell start on, uh, at left back. Um, Ogbana, probably Dawson, will, will retain his spot. Um, and then right back will be Vladimir Kufal, uh, one of our, uh, actually our newest signing. Um, and then, so we'll play back four. We'll set up with two midfielders that sit right in front of him and Declan Rice and Tana Suchek, who have been, I mean, invaluable is an understatement. They've been just so important to our team. If one of those yeah. two get injured, we're, we're, we're in big trouble. And then, you know, basically how we've been playing all season is, in front of those top two, we'll have two wingers and sort of a number 10 sitting in front. We've really struggled to find a consistent number 10. We tried Saibin Rama in there. We tried Paulo Fornals there. We tried Manuel Lanzini. I don't think anyone's really taken that spot for their own yet. It's probably like a missing link sort of transitioning from the midfield to the attack. Our two wingers on the right, you'll have Jared Bowen, um, who's, who's been a very good signing for us over the last year. And then on the left, You'll either have a four nulls playing the left wing or, or our newest signing, uh, Saibin Rama. Uh, and then up top, we'll, we'll play a lone striker formation. Um, lately, it's been Sebastian Hilaire. We just sold him, but he was playing because Mikel Antonio was injured. Antonio's back, so we'll probably be playing um, Antonio up top. But yeah, we, we like to soak up pressure and then hit hit players with the counter or hit teams with the counter attack. It might be a bit different or a bit difficult to do that against Burnley, I think, given that you're a team that sort of likes to like sit back yeah, and pressure yeah. on the counterattack as well. So really interested to see how that matches up. 
Yeah, I think I think like, like I said, I've mentioned it already, but I think that's why we have a good record against you um, because I think that is the style of play that you try and go with. But obviously, we don't to counter attack a side. That side's got to open up in the first place, and that's just not something that Burnley do very often, if at all, this right. season. That's why we're not scoring goals. Uh, maybe but that's a different debate. Um, one thing I do want to ask you: you mentioned Jared Bowen a couple of times. So, like I said, how well he's done. So, I like, talk to you about Jared Bowen then, and, and how uh, and how he's done well. Like, why is he done well? And the reason why I want to know is because. There was a lot of rumours, I think there were only rumours to be fair, but a lot of rumours that Burnley were interested in him. And obviously you boys came in and you boys just showed the money and, and things like that. And that tends to be like a, an issue for Burnley recent years. Like you get rumoured that you're going to be buying somebody and then another club would either see that or or or, or just come in with a bid and then they buy him. So we were quite frustrated at the time that uh, it didn't turn out to be true or whatever. But, uh, but talk to me about how he's done so well at West Ham then and, what, and why he's doing so well. Well, first, I think he, he puts the ball in the net. Um, I don't oh, know yeah. his numbers off the top of my head. I think he has four goals this season, um, you know, which is solid for a winger at this point. I think he has yeah. four goals and two assists or something like that. Um, I will say attacking-wise, though, he, he can be more clinical. Um, there are times where he just doesn't make the right decision or he makes the wrong pass. Um, and he can go missing. For, for quite a bit of time. But the reason why I really like Jared Bowen, and I think David Moyes likes him too, is he, he also, um, he, he works his socks off. He, he, he comes back on defense, um, you know, really pressures those wing backs and takes pressure off of our back for, um, you know, our wings are, have been really good at doing that. Whoever's playing, they, they come back on defense and then help those, those full backs, or if we're playing a three at the back system, those wing backs. And I think that's been, a reason why we have been good so defensively we sort of have extra cover back there and, and and Bowen like I said he just he just works his socks off comes back um he's a very good defender for an attacking player at least um but yeah he always has a goal in him too uh he has a hell of a left foot um likes likes to cut back inside from the right from the right wing um he just needs to be a little bit better at his decision making but yeah can put the ball in the back and in, in the net and he works his socks off I think those are probably the two main things that I like about him yeah definitely um I've quickly as well before we start talking about the game on Saturday as well I want to talk to you about um Haller and Anderson obviously didn't work out for them boys at West Ham uh, but you spent a lot of money on them so like what happened with them then were they just not interested just not good enough because I remember when you signed Haller, I remember we played you not long after. And I remember there was a lot of conversation between me and my mates and how this player is so good and this player can hurt you. Because mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember where you bought him from off the top of my head, but I remember him doing really well at that club, or it was quite clinical anyway. Um, so what went wrong at West Ham? Why didn't it work out at West Ham for them too? Yeah, so for Hilaire, uh, it's, it's very complex. And if you went on West Ham Twitter, either people loved him or, or people hated him. And I was very one of the very few that sort of played the middle ground. Um, Compared to past West Ham striker signings, he was by far not the worst. I mean, we've had some god awful signings, um, center forward and striker signings, just awful. And so, I mean, he didn't have the best goal scoring record, especially for a 45 million pound transfer fee. Um, but he also wasn't the worst player. I also don't think we played to his strengths. The reason why he was mm -hmm. so good at Frankfurt was he was sort of, um, sort of like a Firmino at Liverpool. He he played up top, uh -huh. but he had. Jovic and I uh, forgot the other guy's name, um, sort of playing on the sides of him. It's why he got so many assists and, and defenders had to focus on those two guys, which opened up goal scoring opportunities for him as well. That's why I think he, he was so successful. And that's why I think he's going to kick on Ajax as well. I just don't think West Ham was the right fit for him. Um, so that's, that's with Hilaire. I, I do think that there were some times where I questioned his work rate as well. And then speaking of work rate, Felipe Anderson, all, all effort. I mean, the guy has so much talent, um, mm. but I just, I don't think he's built for the Premier League. Um, I think he's got too much of a flair player. Uh, definitely doesn't fit David Moyes' type of play where he, he doesn't want that flair. He wants sort of a, a tough guy who will work his socks up like a Jared Bowen. Um, Felipe just doesn't really bring that. I know the numbers say that he has a lot of tackles, um, but he just looked disinterested, didn't really show emotion. Um, I don't know. I just... Again, similar to Hilaire, I don't think he really ever fit the team, fit the style, fit the culture. Um, and he's not really playing well at Porto either. Um, the Porto manager has also criticized his work rate and his effort. So I, th I think it's something with the player and sort of his mindset. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think that's the reason why it hasn't worked out for him. 
Yeah, fair enough. Let's look ahead to the game on Saturday then. Obviously, uh, if you're watching in England, or if you're watch, sorry, watching this in England, the game will be shown live on Amazon Prime, uh, Saturday 3 o'clock. Uh, we will be hosting a watch-along here on Turfcast Podcast, like yeah, usual again, Saturday 3 o'clock, of course. It's going to be the same time of the game. Um, so tune in for that if you want to. Um, but, Justin, just talk to me about sort of like what sort of challenge you expect from Burnley then, because I know everyone sort of like likes to criticise Burnley and um, things like that and say, oh, just a long ball team and things like that, but there's a lot more to it than that, let's let's be fair, but what sort of challenge are, are you expecting from the Clarets this Saturday? Yeah, two things come to mind. Um, we touched upon one of them, which is, I think, the style of play that Burnley brings to the table doesn't really play into West Ham's favour. Um, they're very compact, mm. well-organised and disciplined at the back. Um, which doesn't allow a lot of room for a counterattack, which I think is West Ham's best chance at scoring goals. Um, So that's one. And two, and we talked about this on on my show, is that Chris Wood and Ashley Barnes always seem to have a goal in them against West Ham. I know you mentioned that Wood has has had a a poor season. He's in a bit of a bad run of form. Um, And and maybe Dice will give him a bit of a break put him on the bench and think about it for a bit. Um, but if history tends to repeat itself, we have to worry worry out for him and Ashley Barnes. It just seems like there's always just a goal in one of those two, even Jay Rodriguez. Um, and I think that's a big reason why we've had such a poor record against you guys. We just haven't really been yeah. able to deal with those strong, powerful guys that work, that work their socks off as well. Um, defensively, you just haven't been able to deal with them. So I'm a bit nervous, although our defense has been better of late, still a bit nervous about those guys as well. Yep, yeah, fair enough. Uh, let's have a look at predictions then. Um, I know we've obviously done it on your show and things like that, but we'll do it for the for the sake of our our viewers. Um, everyone who, who watches the show and, and and listens to the podcast will know that I've predicted one one, um, and I'll say what I said on the podcast and stuff. I just think it's a case of um, you know I, it's going to be a very tight game because these are two very well organised sides who, who are both. I think we've both only conceded. I think it's twenty one goals we're both on at the minute, so we've both got very similar defensive records. Um, and like I say, both well well drilled, well organised. We're quite compact, so I don't think that's going to give West Ham much um, chances on goal. Or fingers crossed, anyway. That's hot. So I, I'm going to go for one one because I think it's going to be put it this way: it's either one one or nil nil. And I'm choosing one one simply because I want us to grab a goal. I, 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 we need to start scoring goals again. And if I could choose anybody to score that goal, it would be Chris Wood, simply because the lad lad needs it. But as you will will if you again if you listen to the podcast, you'll know that I don't actually want him to start on Saturday. Um I, I think he's had enough chances. I think it's time for him to to have a bit of a break, clear his head and come back stronger fighting. But like I said, we've discussed that on the podcast. And just before I do ask for your opinion, Justin, it's quite interesting that you have mentioned Chris Wood. Obviously you'll be unaware of the debate going on between Burnley fans about him being dropped. Some Burnley fans uh, ludicrously su- suggesting that we should sell him or he's finished, uh, which is just an absolute um, uh, joke, to be honest. I'm going to use a stronger word, but I, I-, I pulled back. I just said joke. But uh, but yeah, so it's interesting that you say that. But yeah, Justin, so like, what, what are your thoughts? How do you think the game's going to pan out then? Like, what, what's your prediction for the game and, and of course, the result? Yeah. Um, so I'm going with 1 1 as well. Uh, based on the head to head history, I'm just a bit yeah. hesitant to, to say that we'll, we'll, that we'll get all three points. I also, even though we have been pulling off results and we did play very well against Everton, which you you mentioned that match earlier, I don't think over the last month we we played all that well. Um, We certainly have struggled to put the ball um, in the net. Uh, Mikel Antonio should start for the first time in about a month and a half, so that that does give us something that we have been doing well with him. Yeah, he's a good player. Um, Yeah, yeah, he is, and I think he fits Moyes' system. Uh, I think he's a Moyes type of striker. Um, he's also very unique with this combination of speed and strength. Um, but like I said earlier, I, I just think you guys are just a, a very well-organized team, very compact at the back. You guys are also in a pretty good run of form. I know you guys lost to United, but you guys played them pretty well, and, and United are, are a good side. So, you know, I, I think I think we're all, all also in a good – I just think it's two teams that – have pretty similar styles of play. It might not be the prettiest game, but I do think both teams do do have a goal in them. Um, I am going to say West Ham will get on, get on the front foot and score first, um, but classic West Ham style will let up an equalizer in the second half. I think it'll be a good tough game, but it won't be the prettiest. And I think I think a draw will probably be a fair result. I hope I'm wrong, and I hope to come out firing and win four 0 But I <laughs> yeah. just, don't, just don't see that happening. I think it's one one uh, draw. 
Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned the first goal because one thing I always I always say is the first goal is massive in Burnley games because of the style of play. If we get the first goal, we are shutting up shop. That's it. We are we are not coming out. We are two banks of four, compact. You, it's up to you to break us down at that point. Um, whereas if the opposition scores the first goal, then obviously we then have to come out of our comfort zone a little bit, try and open up a little bit more. And that's where teams um, such as West Ham, like you say, who enjoy counter-attacking football, can hurt us. So... Um, if you get the first goal, as 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 you predicted, it will probably be better for West Ham to then keep going to to attack Burnley, to to let Burnley come at them a little bit and then push on. Uh, hopefully, Moyes isn't watching this and getting any tips. Um, but that that's probably the best thing for you to do. If we get the first goal, it, I will say what I say every time we get the first goal against any team that isn't the big six, we probably will go on and win the match. That's just that's just the Burnley way. Obviously, it doesn't happen every time. Of course, it doesn't. There has been times where we've scored first and lost and scored first and not gained all three points. Um, so it's interesting you mentioned that. But yeah, the first goal, I think you're right. The first goal will be massive. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point because uh, I think that, like you said, it affects the style of plays of both teams, whoever scores first, right? So I didn't mm. really think of it that way, but... Um, yeah, hopefully we, we can score first and then kick on, uh, sort of bring you guys out a bit more because you guys have to score yeah. and then hit you on the corner. Um, we'll see, though. Again, I don't think it'll be the prettiest game. Um, you know, I think both teams will, will deserve the, the well-earned point. We'll see. Yeah, well, uh, thank you for that, Justin. I appreciate you coming on. Um, and just before, yeah, we, before we end the show, I just want to give everyone um, a shout where they can find American Hammers YouTube channel, social media, that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, so American Hammers Network is a YouTube channel. Um, And then on Twitter, it's American Hammer 3. American Hammer 3 on Twitter. Happy day. So please go and check Justin and the channel out. Uh, And Justin, just just want to say thank you for coming on and uh, good luck for Saturday, but not too much. You too, Joe. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it.